All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Trade Findings and Adjustments for Tuesday, the 13th of October. We won't be long tonight because there's not a whole lot to worry about. But short and simple, for those of you that want to jump into a JP Morgan opportunity, and for those that maybe are currently in it, I want to go through JP Morgan one more time, work all the numbers and work a current position if you so chose to enter one today. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, going over everything, JP Morgan beat on their earnings, which I don't know if you think about it, it's kind of like, duh. This company, for whatever reason, always beats on their earnings. There's never a doubt if J.P. Morgan is going to beat their earnings or not. It literally is just the way it is. With that said, um, third quarter credit provisions fell to just $611 million, while fixed income and equity reserves surged, helping the biggest U.S. bank smash Wall Street forecasts. How's that for a first sentence, right? They basically said, hey, it is a bank. They set aside much lower dollar figure of money for loans that, uh, that aren't getting to get paid. That's a short answer. Their loan reserves to make up for loans that are turn into foreclosures, they said, hey, we decided to do a lot less. So instead of being at the nice $2.22, I had at $2.24, they came up at $2.92 per share. Kevin, how did they do that? How were they able to hit that dollar figure? It comes down to nothing more than they did not set aside an extra, I think it was $6.8 billion. They came in for revenue, $2.99 billion versus $2.83. So maybe they didn't set aside $1.6 billion more. Credit loss precision rose by $611 million, a much lower figure than what they were expecting. So what it really came down to was this. Number one, they're not setting aside as much because they feel they don't have to. And second, um, Jamie Dimon said, hey, if we need to, we can set aside up to another $20 billion that completely spooked markets. So here's a great example of a CEO blowing it. He caused a panic. He caused a panic. He said, hey, if we need to, we will set aside another $20 billion. Well, when you do the math and they only make $29.9 billion in a quarter, that tends to freak some people out. So the stock lost $1.66 or 1.62%. So let me just kind of get this in here. JP Morgan lost $1.66 or 1.62% on fears that they may have to raise another 20 billion sometime in the future. Still holding the $100 level of support.
If I was to look at JP Morgan, got up to the 200 day at 102.84. How far down are they most likely going to go? If you were to look at this chart, how far down would you tell me JP Morgan's going to go? I'm going to grab a quick screenshot of it. Okay, I see a couple 90s. That's the midweek. I need this one. And I'm going to shrink it down so we can all see it. And I'm going to take this one out. Hold on to it. All right. So you guys said 90. If I was to look at it, I'm going to go that the first level, that's interesting. So someone said right down to the lowest. If I was looking at JP Morgan, I'm going to kind of side with Bill Brandner. 98.39 is its first support level. You could use a horizontal support where it seems to have held 100 last month. So I'd really go 100. I'd go 98. Your first pivot point is 96.72. Then you're going to test the lows at 90.54. Then you have 89.20. So if I was looking at where it was going to go or how low it could fall to, I'm probably looking at my first levels of, of support. I'm going to start off with 100. I then will go to 98, 96, 90, 54, and then 89, 20. Now, realistically, on a company that just beat earnings, where do you think it's going to fall to? Not where it could to. Where do you think you're realistically, where do you think it could fall to? There you go. Yeah, 50 right so it's kind of funny because it's already at that hundred we're kind of saying yeah maybe but the 50 is a stronger level of support than a horizontal level of of support in the extended hours jp morgan is up 17 cents so as i take a peek at it I'm looking at this trade and I'm going, you know what? I like where it, where it's heading. I like where it's at. Let me go through a little bit of what we currently have on JP Morgan. Currently. For some people, we've got trades where we did half leap long calls so let's work with those ones to start off with and these are ones that i feel you could still get into today and be in great shape if you like it let me know leap long calls january 2022 at the $55 strike price do the math on this one, just as a heads up. If you do the math right now, it'll cost you $46.72. And we're going to go 73. 
break even, right? 55 plus cost basis of 46.73 equals Fifty five plus forty six seventy three equals one oh one seventy three. And the best part about it, Delta. Ah, come on. Zero point nine nine. For half the cost and no dividends, you could own JP Morgan for one dollar of extrinsic value. or $46.73 for the next year and three months. One dollar. Now again, you're gonna say, well, Ken, that's not necessarily true. You're correct. It's one dollar and five cents rounding up. Does anyone think JP Morgan won't be worth $1 more than it currently is today? Now, yes, these people, myself, right? <laughs> um, we're in it for 107.04. Does anyone think JP Morgan won't trade higher than 107.04 in the next one year and three months? It's a no brainer. Now, some of us did this little heavy things, right? Half of them, we had a short call in place. Let's work the other half, the current positions. This might be one you might be willing to get into. Let's work the half covered call side. Current positions, right? Let's do it this way. Current position, and let's equal it so you can see it. So current position, long call, purchased for um, 52.04, short call, Sold for five bucks. Net debit is equal to the 52 minus the five. So it's 47.02. Break even is equal to uh, 55 plus 47.02 which is equal to 102.02.02, should be 04. I need to remember the four cents. I've got it a little bit wrong. That's your current break even. And if JP Morgan trades higher than 
115 and by January two thousand twenty one, you make one fifteen minus one oh two point oh four, which is equal to you're gonna use a calculator so I don't make any mistakes, minus one oh two point oh four. You make twelve dollars and ninety six cents. Or you divide that 1296, right? You divide that 1296 by the 102.04, or you make a 12.65% return. I absolutely love where we're at. Well, Kevin, what about your shares? Actually, before I go to theirs, let's work this, this position right now. If you wanted to enter this position right now, new trade, right? New trade is entering this position today. New trade is going to be a... 55 115 calendar bull call. Pretty simple, right? You buy to open the 55 January 22 long call for 46.73. You sell to open the 115 January 21. Short call for a buck ninety. Net debit is equal to forty six seventy three minus one ninety forty four dollars and eighty three cents. Break even is still equal to fifty five dollars plus forty four eighty three, which is equal to Ninety nine eighty three. What am I doing wrong? Shouldn't happen that way. Forty six seventy three. Wow, we may have just found an arbitrage. Is that really true? Forty six forty six seventy three. Dollar ninety the mark for both of them is forty four eighty three forty four eighty three fifty five plus forty four eighty three ninety nine eighty three is your break even. is amazing and currently the stock is trading at 100 point 78 how would you like to wait for time decay to capture an in the money position that has almost a dollar, has 95 cents of a break even value 
in it. Now there's some kind of arbitrage, maybe some numbers haven't caught up, but if you were entered this new trade today, and as long as you are paying $178, that's not true. As long as you are paying $45.78, if you're paying less than $45.78, you already have, you're doing better than your break even. Well, Kevin, why is this? This is an arbitrage trade. It's something that's going to take some time where the time decay will actually benefit you on a debit trade. Kevin, how is that possible? Well, mathematically or in theory, it's not possible. But mathematically, you get these arbitrages and you have this opportunity. For those that are looking at a possible new trade, what an amazing opportunity you have to get in right here. Our current people are okay, but if you're looking for an awesome new trade, with some arbitrage and as long as you got into it for less than $45.78, you already have some in the money value, or as I would call it, some break even value inside of your trade. Why does this work so well? Because you get this dollar ninety, right? And this dollar ninety that if you lost it between now and the next earnings, that dollar ninety when the stock is currently trading at a hundred seventy eight, take your hundred and seventy eight minus the dollar ninety comes out to 98.88. Why do I like that? Because for the next quarter, that'll keep me just 51 cents above my 50-day simple moving average. If I had to wait a quarter in my 50 day simple moving average held, I'm going to be upside down 51 cents. But I've got 95 cents in that arbitrage. What a killer trade to be in. Now, negatives. Some negatives to being into this trade. If you listen to any of the talking heads, right? Negatives. Banks looking for a higher yield curve. So let's put this into perspective. Is the Fed going to raise rates in the next year and three months? Probably not. So you're not going to get it in this yield curve. Negatives. Stimulus. Protects. The loan. I should say this way. The home loan markets. The risk is that there's not another stimulus package. And then after that stimulus goes out beginning of next year, risk is foreclosures. 
And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say this. Between you, me, and the fence post, a foreclosure really doesn't hurt the bank. They write it off. They sell the home. They've got PMI interest. So as long as they sell it for 20% less than their home loan, they're set. Not a big retail, uh, not retail, um, residential mortgage drop or cycle in the near future because home loan rates are so low. There is employment risk. There is, um, I'm going to call it Wall Street market risk, which is the stock market risk, right? They do do some trading and so forth. So there are those risks for JP Morgan. But what a killer trade to be in if you can pay 178 78 cent, excuse me. If you can pay, so I should put it here. If you pay $45.78 or less, you made an arbitrage that was awesome arbitrage um time dk benefit it's that simple it is that simple and you're going to be in a great shape so if you like this, you want to see this in your account, let me know. If you already have some JP Morgan in your account, I'm probably not looking to put this into your account. But what a killer trade to be in. And what a unique opportunity you have by waiting to go ahead and put this trade on. And for the record, to give credit where credit is due, this trade was presented to me by Dr. Babu Gupta, who, if he would hurry up and retire, um, I'll pay him good money to manage money for all the doctor friends that he used to know, and he'd be he'd be set to make a killing. <laughs> Any questions in regards to this trade? If there are not, have a wonderful evening. Maude, when you have a second, give me a quick call. Um, Jeff, I'm planning on talking to you Thursday. I will text you in the morning, but probably early afternoon or when you have time, we'll go through some things. Guys, have a wonderful evening. I appreciate your time. And ooh, we do have something coming up. What was that one coming up here? Yep, we're good. Guys, have a great evening, and I will talk to you So There's a hand up. Who's got their hand up? Type something in. I want to... Dr. Gupta. Can you type in your question, or do you want me to unmute you? What would you like me to do? Uh, two other questions actually came in. Would you consider doing that diagonal not that far in the money? I would, Abraham, but I like that delta. So in all honesty, that's the strike price I would use. Could you get away with a 70? You could, but I really like that delta. That delta is what does it for me. Here you're getting a chance to get almost a dollar for dollar movement on the stock and you're in good, good shape. And the second question, would you just outright own the stock? And yes, that's why we have some of those positions that are there. In fact, if you look at the stock ownership, I'm glad you said that. If you look at the stock ownership, for those that got in at $96.47 and added the 592, if we just do a little bit of just bare bones numbers here, 96.47 plus $5.92. 
this total comes out to be a hundred and two dollars and 39 cents so for these stock ownership that have protection there is two dollars and 39 cents of risk i could sell off those long puts not quite ready to do it now and get back two dollars and three cents which would give them in this whole last trade over last month a whopping 36 cents of risk they took for five weeks so could you get into stock ownership definitely do it it's a great opportunity uh i would tell you i would expect jp morgan in all honesty to be able to trade higher to 160 at the end of the year versus where it's at right now so plenty of opportunity there all right, guys, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for your time. And uh, next time we'll talk to each other is Thursday morning. Goodbye, everyone.